at that. Here we've got Jen. Can you hear me? Air, Jen. Yeah, you're on the air. How about you go ahead and take it away for a little while? Okay, did you hear me at all before, or was I just talking to no one? Uh, I heard you for a while, and it cut out after a minute, so I don't recall. Okay, so I don't know at what point that I cut out, but anyway, I wanted to... Without bringing people to church. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wanted to just kind of say that when, when talking to people about the movement, one thing that's important is to adjust your expectations, to not think that you're going to show somebody a movie, a zeitgeist addendum or a zeitgeist, and then immediately afterwards they're going to say, you know, thank you, this is the information I've been missing all my life, where can I sign up uh, to say that I'm on board? So <laughs> it's just not going to happen, and so a lot of us have come across that and have been frustrated by that. But the thing to remember is, is this isn't really about uh, you know, winning somebody over 100% in the first conversation. This is a process. This is a, an evolutionary process for all of us. And we're all learning and growing together. So it, it helps to recognize that, that when you're talking to people, that it is about, like you mentioned, planting seeds. Even if somebody is in 25% agreement with some of the things you're talking about, that's a good place to start. For many people, it takes months. Some, some, it will take years before people grasp these concepts. Because you've got to think about it. This is a lifetime of conditioning into our current value system that they're having to make adjustments to. So it, it's quite a bit to wade through, and it can be overwhelming. And another thing I wanted to say is that it's important to not assume that the person that you're talking to is illogical or irrational. That one key to really connecting with somebody is to assume, hey, this is a, a rational human being and understand that their beliefs make sense to them in their belief system. And Start from there. Ask questions. Take a genuine interest in their response to questions and learn about them. Learn what they believe, why they believe it. Learn what they fear and what they desire and start from there because you can relate the Venus Project ideas to what, what somebody values because at, at our core, we all want the same things. We all want our basic needs met. We want to be loved and accepted by people. We want to feel like we are contributing, making a contribution to society and uh, achieving something with our life. A lot of times that's why people are, are religion serves a purpose for people uh, when we're talking about belief systems. It, it's, it's the story that gives our life purpose. And that's why so many of us have grown up with that. There is an important piece to having purpose to your life. So how about let's design a society where instead of working a job that you don't feel like you're making a contribution in any way, you're just you know selling widgets or you know pushing papers or you're doing something to make money for somebody else and it's just a job. You don't have any personal investment in in the real outcome of that job. Well, what if we designed a society where what you actually do what you, throughout your day is you know, interacting with people in, in a way that is forwarding humanity, uh, a way that we can design a s system to make the world a better place and feel good about what we do. And that's one of the reasons why I feel good about even volunteering for the movement. But but that's some way to start with people, is to, to start with where you have common values. Uh, you know, share your vision about what, what the Nisbet Project is, because and share your enthusiasm for it, and people will want to learn more about it. Bit, yeah. I'm losing you there a little bit. You're getting you know, distortion. You're breaking up a bit. Okay, so about, can you hear me now? Just barely. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, everything you're saying there, really good stuff. Uh, just to take it back at the moment on what you said, uh, I, I kind of felt the same way uh, when I first saw the the Zeitgeist movement. The 
videos to send them. You know, and man, who can't watch this and just realize everything that's wrong with the system and want to change it? You know, and you've got to realize, well, if you think that way, it's because you've already been been conditioned to be ready to accept that and to see that. And uh, a lot of other people have been conditioned in much of a different way that that they think what you think is pretty crazy. And understanding that divide is is a big roadblock to undercoming your own understanding and how to communicate with people. So are you still there, Jen? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, so go ahead and take it away again since we got past that. <laughs> okay, yeah. So starting with where the values are similar is key because basically people have an attachment to their beliefs. It's part of their identity. So if you threaten, if, you, if you're telling them outright that they're wrong about something, people take it as a threat to their identity. They take it personally. Most of us have had that experience, and most of us have been on the receiving end of that, too, where we feel attacked by somebody who is challenging us. And um, so it's important to, to realize that uh, it's a delicate thing. You, it, it helps to know the person's worldview, where they're coming from, to ask them questions, to see where they're oriented. Uh, you know, are they strong in a religion? Are they strong in, in you know, have think in terms of solving problems through politics or whatever and, and, and find out what it is that they really desire and speak to that. For example, especially in Indiana, I know because I went to college there, but I know that there are a lot of conservative Christians there and I went to a conservative Christian college there. And one of the things that I would say is it's challenging to talk to people from that standpoint because obviously we're wanting to expand on that say well let's think beyond just what you've been taught in that setting and one way to do that is to start with the way that people view Christ and the value why they value the teachings of Christ that he was somebody who used you know created miracles or actually I should say performed miracles to create abundance in situations. So I think they could identify with that being a Christ-like characteristic. You don't have to agree with their religion to be able to speak to them about these topics and have them understand that the value system is essentially the same. That we're trying to create abundance to provide for people because we believe all people are, are equal and you know the one organism that nobody can really claim ownership on on uh, on that, that we're all in it together. So I think if you focus on that connection and that tie, there are some similarities. And that way you're working from within the worldview and expanding on it instead of being a, an obstacle or challenging it so somebody is trigger, it triggers them to put up their defenses. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you're there, Jen. Okay. Um, I, that's, that's a really good point uh, there with uh, connecting with Christians because one of the things uh, we've got to simply acknowledge uh, as a movement here, especially within the United States, is that Christians constitute a pretty large proportion of the population. And basically the same thing goes for uh, Muslims because they also uh, believe in a lot of the teachings of Christ. And the message is pretty similar. So when you're dealing with a lot of people that have maybe some religious point, a viewpoint, there is really a lot of common ground that we can use to overcome that roadblock. Uh, and uh, I myself am a, a Christian, and I've kind of adopted the viewpoint that, well, the historical issue, the facts issue, you know, whatever that is, to, to really put the basis on it is not not what is important to me. What is most important is the values. And those values are just about 100% in line with what we're trying to do here. 